we installed Caffey and Homebrew from the terminal. We will be converting a scikit-learn data set to the CoreML framework. So you can see what the process is like when using a machine learning model that is not in the .ml model format. The data set we are going to use is tied to a famous statistician from the early 1900s named Ronald Fisher. He published as R.A. Fisher. If you Google his name, you can explore his work. This is what I found on the Wikipedia page. This page will basically give you a rundown of everything he's been involved in for his whole life. The data set that I am talking about is the IRIS data set, and you can view the information pertaining to it right on the Scikit-Learn website. You will find it in the toy data set section. Toy data sets are provided so we can learn how to use models provided to us in Scikit. If you would like to dig a little deeper, you could find some of the information directly related to the IRIS data set here, which I was able to get to just by clicking on Load IRIS. The UCI machine learning repository is where it originates. This is another popular site amongst the machine learning community. I would encourage you to explore it so you can get some ideas on how you can use machine learning. This is the IRIS data set. This is the main page. And it's basically a repository of a whole bunch of machine learning models. If you would like to install the latest release, you can find all the pertinent information here on this page, scikit-learn.org forward slash stable forward slash install.html. We've been through all of this in the previous section. We can now go over to the Spider console and begin the steps necessary to convert a scikit model to CoreML. In case you are wondering where the default install of Anaconda resides, you'll find it in your user folder. It should basically be sitting at the top here. What I basically did was I dragged the icon over to my dock, click on it, and have it launch. From there, we'll get into the Spider console. Let's launch Spider, and I'll see you inside. We can clear these two lines. The first thing we are going to do is import the data sets from sklearn. In the model we are using, this data set consists of three different types of irises. The next thing we are doing is choosing the type of model, which is linear. This is generally used in statistics and coincides with logistic regression. In a nutshell, it is pulling in best probability based on independent values. Logistic regression is usually used when there is a variable in place with only two variables attached to it. For example, male or female, or age 65 and under, or 65 and over. A little typo here. In the next line, we are importing the job lib. The job lib provides us with utilities to save and load Python objects. Next, we are, of course, importing the CoreML tools. Once we have the CoreML tools imported, we're going to load the IRIS data set. And I have a few typos here. OK, that's correct. We can add a comment by entering pound sign. Coding in a different language is still coding. We use different symbols to convey the same thing, in this case, a comment. The first thing we're going to do is start by creating a variable. We type iris equals datasets.load underscore iris, open and close parentheses. Basically, we're instantiating the variable at this point. We then have our model equal the logistic regression equation. We type model equals logistic regression, and again, instantiate it. Then we fit the model with the iris data set. You can see the parameters that it's looking for. We now have a trained model with our iris data set in place. I need to pass in the target parameter. So at this point, we're ready to make our prediction. We can leave another comment here so that the code is a little easier to read for the next person. We can type pound, make prediction. Under this line, we can print a string 
that says something along the lines of prediction with the scikit iris model. Notice the single quote in Python as compared to double quotes in Swift when we want to represent a string. On line 23, we are supplying the model with some data from the iris dataset. The data is referencing the sepal length and sepal width. Think of the sepal as a landing pad for bumblebees. It's also referencing the petal length and petal width. This is the data that will be used to make the prediction. At the keyboard, we could start typing. Print iris.target underscore names. We then enter a double array and surround it by parentheses. Inside the first array, we enter model.predict. Inside the second array, we enter four integers as doubles. These numbers represent characteristics of the iris flower, like the sepal length and width and the petal length and width. Remember to explore the scikit-learn website so you can read about how the data is stored inside these models. We can add a comment here as to what the parameters are inside the double array. You could think of this as a test data set that we are entering so that we know that our model is working correctly. This next line is entered as a means to test the data. We start typing joblib.dump. Open parentheses, model, comma, open quote, single quotation, iris.pkl, close quotation, close parentheses. A .pkl file is a file that is dumped using Python's pickle module. Basically, this file type lets us save our data structure. At this point, we're ready to compile our code. So what we do is we select everything. We've done this before and click Shift Enter. And look at that, we have a prediction with the scikit iris model of Virginica. Virginica is a type of iris. If you'd like to Google it, you can go ahead and Google it. But that's basically what it's returning here. So we know that everything is working at this point. The next step is where the magic happens for us iOS developers. We now use the CoreML tools to save the model in the proper CoreML format. The overall technology is important for us to understand and is basically a master's degree in and of itself. We as iOS developers need to understand the conversion process and the manipulation of the data so that we can apply it as code. This is what was mentioned at WWDC this year. Apple wanted to give us the power of machine learning at our fingertips and wants us as developers to treat it as code, the same way that we do in real world circumstances. Grasping this statement has made it easier for me as a developer to come to grips with understanding the process. The overarching topic is real complex, but if we know just enough about the process, we can incorporate this technology into our apps and into the apps of our employers. Let's stop here before we start using CoreML tools to complete the translation. In this section, we started the process of converting a scikit-learn model to a CoreML model from the Spider console.